I really must do some ironing. I look like a complete scruff. I apologise. If I come up and I fall off, that's on me. That's on me. If I come up and I fall off, that's on me. That's on me. If I come up and I right, so last week I ventured down to London to check out all of the brand new products that Samsung are launching for their latest unpacked event. We have the Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro, the Buds Pro 2, and the two brand new foldable phones, the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4. The latest Samsung attempt at the two-way phone tablet. And the Fold series has always been a kind of love-hate set of devices for me. Well, not necessarily hate, but one that seems to never quite hit all the points that I really want, even though on the surface of things, I really love it. And the same applies with the latest edition. I think on the surface, it's absolutely fantastic, but I still think it's missing a couple of things that would flat out make it the best smartphone. Flown? The best smartphone on the planet, with no other even close. Smart flown. Let's fly on to the next point. It's a bad one. That is a bad one. Subscribe and turn on notifications for all of the coverage on the new Samsung products. And thanks to O2 for sponsoring today's video. O2 are launching Switch Up, where you have the freedom to change your current phone for a completely new one whenever you like, as many times as you like, simply by heading to an O2 store and trading in your current handset. It doesn't matter how long you've had your current phone or how long your contract is, switching has never been easier. O2 Switch Up is automatically included with new O2 Plus plans at no extra cost. All customers can add it to a new custom plan as a bolt-on for just $3.99 a month. Once customers have Switch Up as part of their current plan, they can use it to switch to a new phone whenever they want. Your original phone would be checked to ensure it meets the grading criteria, and then a new handset and new Plus plan or custom plan will be activated to complete the switch, and you wouldn't need to pay off your previous plan. Your original handset would then be refurbished and resold as a like new for somebody else to enjoy. Link in the description for all the info, go check it out. So first, what improvements have Samsung made? Well, personally, I have always felt since the Fold series' inception that the outer display has always been just that tiny bit too small. I'm a phone first, tablet second kind of guy. Thankfully, this is the widest outer display Ever. And with a thinner hinge and bezels, the AMOLED panel is 2.7 millimeters wider than the Fold 3, which may not seem a lot, but every millimeter counts, right? Remarkably, they managed to do this all within the exact same 67.1 millimeter width form factor. And the Fold 4 is also the thinnest and lightest it's ever been at 263 grams. It feels for me probably for the first time ever, a Samsung Fold phone, which I could use as my daily, in my pocket and not feel slightly cumbersome. On that outer display, we still have a punch hole camera cutout for all your beautiful selfie mug shots. Unfortunately though, for this video, you've just got my ugly mug. So there's still no under the display technology on that outer display, but we do have on the inner 7.6 inch 120 Hertz display. And again, it just seems that little bit more impressive this time around. And this folding mechanism is of course the piece de resistance of the Fold series, a tablet that fits in your pocket and apologies for that horrific French accent. To any French viewers, my humble apologies. Honestly though, they've done an amazing job at hiding that camera on the inner display. I forgot to actually test the camera on that inner display, but that will come in my full review. And to be fair, I would probably just use the outer display camera anyway, or the rear cam selfie using the rear cameras. So not hugely important in my opinion, but more on cameras in a second. Very quickly, if you enjoyed this video so far, fold that finger down and uh, press that cheeky little like and subscribe button. That will be wonderful. Not sure what I'm doing now, so I'm gonna carry on with the video. <laughs> so having no visible camera on the inside gives you what you want from a tablet. That beautiful uninterrupted screen for movies, gaming, or watching one of my YouTube videos. No. One cool feature of the Fold when watching YouTube videos and the like is you can split the screen between content and the comments or next videos. It's what's known as flex mode. It means that the phone can stand up by itself. Great if you don't want to hold the device while viewing because we've all been there. Or if you have young kids, for example, and they want to watch some nursery rhymes, they're not quite accomplished enough to hold uh, a piece of hardware and you don't want them to drop it. Although it's probably not the most robust material for some rugged child's play. Speaking on durability though, the inner display has been enhanced from external shock and can be folded up to 200,000 times, tested by Bureau Veritas. Again, 
Not sure about that pronunciation or accent. The rest of the phone is protected by Corning's greatest Gorilla Glass Victus Plus with a metal frame and hinge. It's also IPX8 rated, so you should be fine to submerge the phone in up to 1.5 meters of water for up to 30 minutes. Really impressive for a foldable phone, but particles like sand, for example, are obviously a, a no-go. One really useful thing about the Z Fold 4 is its productivity and multitasking abilities, whether that be co-editing documents in Google Meet or using the optimized Office, Teams and Outlook, thanks to Samsung's ongoing close relationship with Microsoft. All of these types of apps can work great in this tablet form factor, as can things like Facebook and Facebook Messenger, where you can run them side by side. Home feed on the left, messenger app on the right. But the one big thing here is the new taskbar. It sits at the bottom and allows you to seamlessly switch between your favorite and recent apps, very quick and effortlessly. And you can even add up to three apps in a combo app all at once, one button press and three apps pop up and you can then multitask that way. Again, brilliant if you've got three specific apps that you use a lot, all in conjunction with each other at the same time. And then we move on to one of the features which is great in theory, but always leaves me a bit wanting and still hasn't really been rectified, the S Pen. You can use either the Fold Edition or the Pro Edition, both of which are compatible. And with this, you do have all of the same abilities as on the Fold 3 and features like text extraction where you can drag information from an image to another app, like addresses for Google Maps or telephone numbers for your dialing app. So you can click and drag information from one app to the other. Both pens also have a retractable tip, so you don't have to worry about damaging that in a display. But here's the problem. The pens, unlike on the Note series or even the S22 Ultra is a separate purchase again and is not inbuilt to the device yet. Personally, I think that would be fine if my only use for the Fold would be to have it at home on a desk and I could have the pen next to it. So if ever I wanted to use it like you would with a touchscreen laptop, two in one, but the Fold is gonna be in my pocket all day long if it's gonna be my main device and I'm gonna be out of the house and I'm not gonna want to carry personally, don't know about you, a pen with me just dangling around in my pocket. If I'm on the go, I'm not gonna be wanting to carry it around on the off chance that I may occasionally want to use it. So as a result, I don't think I'd probably use it that much. And that's a shame because I do love that idea. Yes, I'm sure there probably will be cases that come along that you can have the pen with it, but again, that's just making the device even bulkier. And I think they missed a the trick this time around and hopefully they can drop that on a possible Fold 5. So as usual, in theory, love the S Pen idea, but still feels a little bit of an afterthought or at least not utilizing its full potential. And then we have camera, which again, leaves me feeling a little bit mixed. Some great things, things that potentially could be improved. We do have a 50 megapixel primary lens, which apparently provides up to four times the resolution of the Fold 3 and 23% brighter images in low light thanks to its larger sensor. That lets in more light. You also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel telephoto with three times optical zoom and 30 times space zoom as they claim. Now, three times optical zoom is not the largest on the market. We have five and 10 times, for example, even on some other Samsung products, but should be enough for most people. Although I'm not quite sure why the space zoom is still used as a term. I think it was introduced on the S20 Ultra, which had up to a hundred times combined zoom, hence the ability to try and take photos of the moon, for example, space, etc. Not sure that quite applies now with a 30 times zoom, but using the two screens is really helpful when you are zooming in on subjects, as you can have the zoom map view on one side, giving you spatial awareness and context to where you are in the scene. Hands-free shooting allows you to rest the phone on a floor or a wall and take videos and photos of yourself as if someone else is taking it for you. Ideal for those cinematic or action style videos and photos. And if you just need a bit of content quick on the go and you don't have anyone with you to help. The camera and performance as a whole is aided by the latest and greatest Android chipset pretty much around, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. I don't really need to go into a great deal of detail on this, it's pretty well documented how it performs. However, I am curious to see in my full review how it affects 
the 4,400 mAh battery capacity, especially in conjunction with Samsung's One UI software. So stay tuned for that going to be very key, I think. Now, the Z Fold 4 is available from £1,649. It is quite eye-watering, although when you take everything into account, it is a com very complete phone and has two different uses at the same time as well. Three if you include the S Pen. And it is available in three different colours, Phantom Black, Beige and Grey Green, which is grey, green colouring. Say what you see. Not the best naming scheme for that one, um, but I like the colour, just say. Full Z Fold 4 review coming very, very soon, and I'll let you know how I get on with it in real world everyday use. So be sure to subscribe for that, and also for the other three products that were announced at Unpacked. The video should be dropping in and around now, so they may already be on the channel as we speak. Like and share if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. So, peace out.